Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. I just want to start off by wishing everyone a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I know it's been a tough one and I just hope and pray that 2021 is full of hope, optimism and happiness. We had a client attended here. Um, this is a very, um, I think a lot of people will enjoy this procedure for one of two reasons. In the left ear, which is the ear that we're performing the procedure in at the moment, there's a huge plug of earwax that I removed off the patient's eardrum, and you'll see that in a moment. And the right ear, that's for all the people that really enjoy the dead skin peels. It's uh, the skin peel and the right ear, so do tune in, that's going to be after this left ear. It's probably one of the, the toughest, thickest pieces of dead skin that I've removed, and it was a bit of a challenge. So I hope you all enjoy. Um, so at the left side, just using a Zolna Suction Pro, this is the only instrument we can use for this particular um, patient in, in, and the wax being so deep, medially impacted. You can't use the ear hook, the ear hook it will just slice through this soft wax, similarly forceps, and a Jobson horn, it's just too deep in. If you're trying to get a Jobson horn in and behind this wax, you're going to graze against the ear canal wall, make contact with the eardrum. So um, we used endoscopic ear suction, what I have coined and termed e-suction. Um, the tympanic membrane is fully visible, the patient is hearing significantly better. I just want to mop up around the edge. Um, the patient had been using drops prior to attending and the day before attending he unfortunately used a cotton bud or a q-tip cotton swab as they call it in America, which impacted this wax right up against his eardrum. He woke up middle of the night in a panic because he completely lost his hearing on this side. He was fearing the worst. Fortunately, it was just the wax impacted against the eardrum. The eardrum is otherwise healthy and intact. There's no trauma. It hasn't perforated it or injured it or bruised it. So it's very fortunate. Just using a fine end gauge, I think I've been pronouncing that incorrectly. Someone pointed me out that I've been calling it a fine end gorge, but it's actually gauge, so I do apologize. <laughs> so just using a fine end gauge, size 18, just to mop up around the edge. I mean, we're not really too concerned by that, actually, it's not non including. Bit of wax is actually healthy. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a talk for the International Audiological uh, Medicine Seminar Symposium it's, um, on the 9th of January and, as, and the talk is focused around serum management it's an international talk so I'm very privileged to be invited to give that lecture and I'm going to sp be spending a bit of time discussing the benefits of earwax. Uh, we always think about earwax as a negative secretion um, from the ear but actually it provides a lot of health benefits and I'll try and record that um, that seminar that I give that lecture and try and upload it um, just on the right side now, so the right ear is a completely different consistency of the wax. The wax is very dry, crumbly. The patient hadn't been using any drops on this side, very reluctant to put drops in both ears. Because when you put ear drops um, to soften ear wax, it can exacerbate your symptoms uh, prior to having it removed. And that's because the wax absorbs the drops, it swells and expands, and it creates uh, more of a blockage in the interim period in the short term. So just using a Jobson horn now, just trying to separate this dead skin. So there's, there's some keratin dead skin on the posterior and anterior canal walls so on the back part of the ear canal and the front part of the ear canal and attached to that is some wax. So I just try to lift that, separate that off the canal wall and I'm using some forceps now to get some purchase and extract this. So I've managed to get some dead keratin off the posterior canal wall, that's the back part of the ear canal. So now there's some dead keratin that's adhered to the front part of the ear canal, so we call that the anterior part of the ear canal, and it's quite lateral, this pit, so lateral is near the entrance. And this skin is a lot thicker and tougher um, than the norm, I would say. So the skin that lines the outer third of the ear canal, so the skin that lines the cartilage portion of the ear canal, is approximately one millimeter in thickness. And then the skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal, which is made up of bone, it's a very thin, delicate layer of skin, um, one tenth 
of the thickness of the skin that lines the outer third. So it's around 0.1 millimeters in thickness. And this skin, as it dies and sheds, it naturally migrates outwards and sideways out of the ear. So the ears evolved for the skin to naturally migrate out of the ear. If it didn't, then everyone's ears would be blocked, full of dead skin, um, which will keep me very busy removing that. So the ear is very clever. It has evolved over the years to naturally expel and migrate the dead skin. And this skin sheds approximately, I think, 3.4 millimeters a month. It's the same, um, uh, so that how quickly the rate of um, the, the skin shedding and migrating is similar to your fingernails. So uh, your fingernails on average, they grow 3.4 millimeters a month, which equates to about one point, sorry, 0 0.14 um, millimeters per day. Just an interesting fact, <laughs> if you're interested in that. Um, so just using a combination of suction now and also the forceps, so this skin is now extending more medially deep into the ear canal and the bony part. However, it's still very, very thick, unusually thick. And um, even with the forceps, I'm really uh, grabbing onto it, trying to pull this off. Now, whenever you remove dead skin, keratin, unfortunately, you do get some blistering. And you'll see that you'll, the, the patient will have some blistering at the end of the procedure on the base of the bony part of the ear canal and also some on the anterior canal wall. Um, so if you pull some dead skin off your finger, for example, in winter, we often get a bit of frostbite and we get some dry skin on our fingers and you peel that, you also get blistering on your finger. It's completely painless for the patient just and I did ask it on a couple of occasions whether it was okay because I was really tugging at this and the patient was absolutely fine he was actually quite enjoying it he found it therapeutic uh, but yes it can cause some blistering and again um, just really trying to tug onto this dead skin it's very thick very thick layer and it's extremely adhered to the canal wall And the, my main part of reasoning uh, for removing this dead skin is that this skin is not going to shed. It's, it's been there for a long time already and it's very thick. And this, the natural, so I'm hoping the undergrowth, the fresher layer of skin, the next layer of epithelial skin cells does migrate because if the skin doesn't migrate out of the ear, then earwax won't migrate out of the ear. So as the skin sheds, it's a conveyor belt it's got that conveyor belt motion and the, the wax that on, sits on top of the dead skin also then naturally migrates out of the ear, but it can only do that if the skin sheds. So I just wanted to remove as much of this dead skin that's coating the ear canal that I don't feel is gonna migrate because it's too thick. So I've just gone back in with um, the zona suction probe. So the forceps did help, but the suction also has a pivotal role uh, we're just trying to lift this off, get a suction grip, pull away and towards me. You can see we're almost trying to tear this. And using a fine end gorge as otherwise it clarinets. When you suction dead skin, it can emit a very loud, almost deafening high frequency squeal. We call that clarinetting and that skin just flaps at the entrance of the suction probe. And it's extremely loud, even for the clinical ear care specialist. So a fine end gorge is uh, a better, uh, it's best, best to attach a fine end gauge, sorry, not gorge, you're going to have to get out that habit to reduce and um, limit any clarinetting. So you probably saw some of the blistering net at the base of the ear canal. That will just heal, that's fine with the patient, Did, wasn't even aware, didn't feel any discomfort whatsoever. So I'm just mopping up a bit more dead skin. So this skin on the posterior canal, we can see there is a bit of dead skin there, so I'm just going to hover over this. It's not as thick as the dead skin on the anterior canal wall. Um, I, I feel this, this will kind of naturally migrate, so I'm just hovering over it, just removing any excess. And we, we never gonna, we're never going to get every little speck out. Um, this might look a lot on using an endoscope, but... In the, in the real terms, it's, it's almost microscopic, all this. So I'm just hovering over. We don't want to, at the same time, so although I want to get the desk and I don't want to cause any, I don't want to cut the ear canal, so I don't want to really abrase it. Um, that blistering is not caused by abrasion. It's just the mere action of the skin coming off. Uh, this is a, this skin is a bit more, it's not as dry, so 
it's a bit more mushy. You don't want to get this, uh, the ear hook, well not the ear hook, the zolna suction probe into the flesh of the ear canal uh, and cause any cuts or bleeding. So more or less finished, the patient is very relieved, just using a fine end just to get some of this dead keratin, surface keratin and soft wax off the entrance um, of the ear canal. We know we're at the entrance because of all the hair, so all the hair follicles are located on the outer third of the ear canal. Lovely healthy eardrum, um, just measured and weighed the contents, it's 403 milligrams. I hope you enjoyed that video guys and I really do hope you're having a fantastic Christmas Eve wherever you are in the world and uh, I hope you have an amazing day tomorrow as well. Uh, just want to say to everyone keep well and safe. Um, yeah and I'll try and upload a video today for tomorrow for Christmas Day. Uh, we shall see you later. Thank you, bye.